Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of the Upload Forum. My name is Wilfred. So, like many of you, I've watched the video posted by Blizzard uh, on the two dungeon designers playing the game. Uh, the title is Adventure with the Death, and I will put the link below. Um, at first, I gave them the benefit of doubt because. Um, you know, as a content provider like myself, sometimes it's really hard to play the game while talking about it, although I'm pretty sure they have prepared a script for it. And also, I mean, it's good to bring two female developers um, onto a spotlight because just for diversity, right? So I was giving them a lot of like, benefit of doubt, but as I was watching the video, I was shocked. I was really shocked. Um, there was basically two level 50 characters uh, playing World Tier 1. Uh, struggle to clear the trash mob, struggle a lot with the final boss, um, World Tier 1, as a level 50. And uh, then it dawned on me that maybe it's true, uh, this developer who designed the dungeons for us uh, to play for many, many hours to come, they don't play the game. It is impossible to be uh, playing that style. Now, look, I'm always a very nice guy, and I, I, I really feel bad talking about stuff like that I really do but um, but I'm, I'm really kind of shocked that um, they don't even get help or training or or tips from the Blizzard um, developer those who de design the character uh, you know you just need to give people a few tips and and they you know if you play the game you probably would get better with that and that was uh, very shocking to me now back in the days when I play Marvel heroes I interacted with the developers as well and uh, I know that they, they do have their personal personal account. They play their game. They buy their own like uh, pack, and uh, they spend money to 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 play the game as well. You know, buying all these cosmetic items because they own their account. Although they could play the game as a developer and you know just create some some uh, level fifty characters or whatever. But uh, I know I know back in the Marvel Heroes day, uh, these developer play their own game. So I am very, very surprised, shocked. I mean, I'm not surprised knowing how the dungeons are being designed. Um, the, uh, they, 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 don't, they don't play. I, I'm not asking for playing professionally. I'm asking for playing adequately as a, as a, as a developer that um, be, be part of producing a game, a product, you should be able to um, play the game fairly well with the fundamental and basic and I don't see in that video maybe they're good I don't know maybe they're just like too focused on talking and uh, so in this video I would like to highlight you know some of this from a dungeon design perspective the problem that I see as a player that play hundreds of hours on this game so far and what I would suggest uh, that, that they could do better because I always like to have a more positive uh, outlook in my video rather than just like going kind of south or all these like um, <laughs> you know things that we shouldn't have seen in the first place. Um, despite their best effort to sort of like test the dungeon design with each other within Blizzard, uh, there are just too many backtracking. It's just way too many. Um, it's not fun. You lose the momentum. You have to maintain the momentum to keep people interested. As a as a, I don't design games, but I play a lot of games. As a, as a gamer, I want to be carried to the climax of facing the final boss and not to do one task, walk for another half a minute, do another task. And, and that is just not, as a gamer, I don't get excited and bring me to that final boss kind of like excitement. I, I, don't, I, I think that is missing there. And they talk about uh, uh, the dungeon being procedurally um, kind of generated, I really don't see. I mean, the tiles, I, I don't really, you know, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to dungeon design, I have to be able to relate to the dungeon. I have to be able to feel as though I was, I am in the dungeon, you know. Um, and, and whether you procedurally generate some tiles in a different way, I don't really care. <laughs> it, it, those things doesn't make me feel that I'm in a different dungeon. A procedurally designed um, generator dungeon would be something that looks different every time when I approach a dungeon. Um, and the, and I think the, uh, uh, it just so, so no no variation at all all the dungeons. And to be honest, they talk about shrines as well. But I feel that the shrine is just too short compared to Diablo three. At least I felt really short. 
may, maybe because the Diablo 4 is a lot slower than Diablo 3, and I think the Shrine need to last longer to be more impactful. Um, I don't get the conduit kind of like a Shrine at all, it's kind of weird. And the, um, and the Corrupted Shrine or the Curved Shrine, it just two, two little monsters that can spawn two fields. They should play Diablo 3. I think this designer should spend more time playing Diablo 3 and to understand how the Curse Shrine or Curse Chest work in, in a game like Diablo. Um, for D4, it's just a few pop a few come monster for five and after they clear them off then you wait for a couple of seconds four or five came out uh in d3 the faster you clear the faster the the the, the monster gets spawned it's just weird so suggestion my suggestion are as such i think the uh you know if i were a dungeon designer of blizzard right or for diablo 4 i will make each dungeon has a story so it has to be immersive the story can be told many ways. Look at the story mode of the Elbow 4. It's very, very nicely made. Uh, you walk through, you could inspect some kind of like object and it tell you a little bit story. Uh, there could be some hologram that, you know, have a reflection of the past. There may be people talking, some voiceover, some voices. Uh, I'll, I'll tell a story through a dungeon that make the dungeon so memorable that you want to go back in day after day. You know, it's more like Marvel Heroes, one-shot dungeon, if those of you who play Marvel Heroes, um, the, the one-shot dungeon tell a story, right? Be as uh, Spider-Man or whatever, uh, there, there's a very nice background story to it. And it has to be memorable bosses and not just, um, you know, Tomb, Tomb Lord or whatever it is that I don't really care. Uh, the bosses has to be, um, you know, go along with the story and you must feel kind of like excited to see, whoa, there's something different here. It's a, it's a different dungeon. I, I can identify this dungeon with this boss because in this story, that is the villain. Um, that is something that they need to do. Um, there are quests in the dungeon, but the quests are just very generic. I, as a hero, I don't really feel like a hero, but I, I, as a hero in Diablo 4 dungeon, would want to accomplish something even if that for that brief like you know 10 minutes or whatever i want to every step that everything that i do inside there must be a meaning behind the overall arcing story of that dungeon uh take warhammer 40,000 inquisitor martyr as an example one of my favorite arpg every mission you go in there's a voiceover telling you why you are in the dungeon every mission that you do they tell you why you are saving some person people and uh and they keep interacting with you the game keep interacting with you as though you are inside the dungeon doing meaningful things and not just like okay another task collect some animus or another task carry this stone to that pedestal for what right and pushing some lever to open a door with some spike on the ground i mean these are not meaningful as a hero i feel um kind of like a, a bit belittled to play all this side, side mission I, I don't feel like i'm a hero doing all these things side missions should have a meaning to it and i would like to design dungeons have variety um i know people say that diablo 3 is uh is very colorful too colorful too cartoonish uh and so on and diablo 4 is going back to diablo 2 i don't play that much d2 by the way um and everything becomes so dark and gloomy i get it you want to get that kind of feeling but they have went to the other extreme that if you put two videos side by side, D3 and D4, I bet you, you will keep watching the D3 and not the D4. Pace is one thing, but the color stimulation is another thing. Um, I, in, in, inside of this dungeon, except a few tile set whereby there's some snow here and there, um, or outdoor here and there, far and few, uh, all this internal structure is so generic, so, um, so dark that I don't really feel any kind of like excitement going into different I don't I can't even tell dungeons from dungeon maybe that's the way to see it um, and to be to design a good dungeon I will balance the time span in the dungeon some dungeon could be longer or shorter than the other that's fine you need variety in life it doesn't have to be everything the same but I would design a dungeon whereby the reward will be proportionate to the time you spend in the dungeon 
because then you don't pick and choose. You, you want to play all dungeons. And as a dungeon designer, if I were one, I would want people to play all my dungeon and not to rank my dungeon by tier and skip certain, certain dungeons and not play certain dungeons. Every dungeon is rewarding, be it XP, loot, or glyph, um, proportionate to the amount of time you spend in that dungeon. And that's as small as that. So you don't need to pick, you just play them more. And I think that's good. And uh, last but not the least, I'll get rid of all these um, kind of like uh, negative uh, affixes of the dungeon that kind of slow you down, make no sense. Like you have to dodge back into a doom to avoid some stunning, and sometimes a doom is like, you know, two screen away from me, uh, or or the, the things that you constantly have to go back and forth to, to do or avoid uh, whatever that keeps shocking you and so on. This is not really fun. Uh, the fun, it may be a net negative condition, and again, quoting the game like Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr, is that um, doing certain things will, uh, or, or, or doing certain type of spell may trigger the demon that spawn. Um, you know, some elite may come if you do that. Kind of thing, make it more fun, it's negative, but yeah, I mean, it's more challenging, but it doesn't have to be like so frustrating just to slow you down, just to make sure that you're not going as fast as, fast as you can. And that is not a very good dungeon design. So, well, anyway, that's my thought. And that is, um, um, you know, the intention of this video is really not to criticize the developers because I know that they are, I hope, I don't know, I hope they are passionate about their job. Um, as, a, as, a, as a dungeon designer, I hope they, they really said, you know, they're proud of what they do and seek ways to improve. And, um, and I hope they also not just listen to all the so-called good feedback, but also listen to the criticism and criticism and do a much better job in dungeon design. Uh, so far, seriously, it's not fun. It's really not fun. It's heartbreaking to even watch the video. Um, you know, with the two talking about the game, it's like they are in a different world. Uh, they play a different game compared to what I'm experiencing. Uh, and, and that is the really sad part about it. But hey, look, I mean, you know, when I watch all these things, I always trigger my thought, like, how can I do better? And that's why I, uh, I want to make this video, share with you my thought if I were uh, uh, a dungeon designer. So what do you think? Do you think I'll get a job in Blizzard um, if I share this video with uh, the CEO of Blizzard? Just kidding. But anyway, um, thank you. And, um, you know, uh, take it easy. I'm hoping that the game will just get better from this point onward. Uh, but after watching that video, I'm not sure how long it will take. All right. See you. Bye.